or the Taffia, as they are known as it, locally. They made me an offer I couldn't understand. <laughs> well, of course, uh, but that's not all, it doesn't end there. Actually, it was the Welsh that set fire to my holiday home. But listen to this. <laughs> it was in Lanzarote. <laughs> Their memory is long and their vengeance is total. <laughs> they remind me of one of the more liberal Islamic states. <laughs> in that they only hold a grudge for 2,000 years. <laughs> so, uh, better do the number. Here's a couple of You know I don't do adverts. <laughs> it's a matter of principle. Not unless I'm right behind the product, anyway. <laughs> yes, I am the voice of Domino's Pizza. <laughs> I recognise the irony of what I'm saying here. Uh, I, am the, yeah, I am the voice of Domino's Pizza, but as I say, I'm right behind that product. It's well, it's not a set. I've been wet. I, I got in the business to sell out. <laughs> I've had these principles for sale for the last 35 years, it's only the last three weeks I've actually been made an offer. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, what's the matter with uh, Domino's Pizza? They sponsored The Simpsons. And you pick your own toppings, so if you don't like it, it's your own fault. <laughs> It's just about the most moral product on the fucking market. But uh, no, I don't do adverts unless I'm right behind the products, and uh, and that's why I like uh, Eddie's yacht supplies for all your nautical needs. <laughs> Feeling peckish on the way home? Mutton Jeffs. That's Mutton Jeff. The ovine chef. <laughs> Sheep on the cheek. You kill them, we grill them. Chips eat free with a two drink minimum. Book early for the gut buster breakfast. Bam, 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 bam. All have the gut buster. And for the gentleman. That's mutton yet. Sheep on the cheek. We'll be back after these messages. And now back to when animals attack magicians. Pick a card, any. Ah! Don't let me see it. Ah! I broke my own rule, I'm an anarchist, I broke my own rule, that no advert rule, I, I broke it many times, but I wrote these two jingles two years ago, and the first one of these, I, is, I wrote this one for the Martini people, in the hope that in return, they would send to me a year's supply, or a lifetime supply, whichever is the greater, <laughs> of their innovating beverage. So this one's called Home Honey I'm High. <laughs> Straight down the middle. <laughs> Home Honey I'm High by the Martini people. Frontal lobes just have a trim, or did you meet the moonies? Wrong on both counts, Jim. See many martoonies. <laughs> Play on words, he was drunk. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This is class A material at charity prices. What do you want out of me? <laughs> Here's jingle number two. And I wrote this one in order to deal with STDs, STIs, gonorrhea, syphilis, anything like that, as, as, as the aforementioned. 
This one's I wrote a little jingle for the National Health Service to help them in their relentless campaign against this social menace. This socio-sexual menace. And I wrote this little rhyme for them, and this one used to be called Lydia Lydia. <laughs> so I guess you finished it off in your head. <laughs> I've got to admit, the uh, clue is in the title. Yeah. But, it's, uh, but it's not called Lydia Lydia anymore, because as any Dean Friedman fan will tell you, you know who you are. As any Dean Friedman fan will tell you, that title's already been used, Lydia Lydia. So now I had to, I found out the hard way. I was just about to do this number, and then from the side of the stage came this, the following discourse. Psst, clark it. Change the title immediately. Why? Is in the audience. Who? The ragamuffin Romeo himself. Dean Friedman here. What the? Huh? Yes, and he's a very litigious person. He can afford a better lawyer than you. So if you don't want to spend the rest of your days in utter penury, change the title immediately. So thinking on my feet, I come up with this new title, and it's a much better title all round actually. It's called now it's called Lydia, Girl with an Itch. <laughs> Proving once again that necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> and not Frank Zappa, as some of you people have previously assumed. <laughs> so it is Lydia, Lydia. Girl with an itch. Lydia, single, sorry, singular. Lyd Lydia. The only one in this number. Lydia, girl with an itch. Lydia, Lydia, get rid of your chlamydia. Only an idiot would ever consider you. <laughs> Here. Oh yeah, here, here we go. Here we are. Now I wrote this five years. When was the G2 summit? Five years ago? Three years ago? Anyway, whenever it was, obviously Bongo went out there. And uh, he's needed in such situations. Listen to what happened then. I heard this on the news. And the minute I heard it, I was so outraged that I put pen to, I broke the habit of a lifetime and wrote a poem about it. <laughs> right, and uh, he's there at the G2 summit with, you know, Osama and uh, all of them. <laughs> Obama, I'm sorry, you don't ever make that mistake. One's dead, the other ain't. Or is it? <laughs> I think we should be told. Anyway, Bongo's out there, right? So would it be in a serious gig? You know, he's not, he's not playing. You know, would it be in a serious gig? He puts, the, he puts on the lounge suit, you know, to fit in. So he leaves his leather trousers, his 10-gallon steps and hat, and his shades, all his key pieces, he leaves all his key pieces in the dressing room and wears the lounge suit, you know, and a, a nice, nice lounge suit to fit in. While he's doing this, some fucker's been in there and stole his trousers, <laughs> steps and, and shaves. And I thought, what a fucking liberty, you know, he's out there trying to save the fucking world. <laughs> And that's the thanks he gets. <laughs> it's like them polar bears, isn't it? You know, I noticed there's not much, uh, you know, the green people are not out in the polar. They fucking blotted the copy book there, aren't they? You know? <laughs> Here's us all weeping over our cornflakes. Oh, the ice caps are melting. Then the fuck, then they, they, they fucking eat that fucking cat and campers out there. Don't they? It's a PR disaster. <laughs> They shouldn't have done that. I don't think they should. I think they, they cleared the pitch for the whole of polar bear kind. There's always one. Anyway, he's fucking. Uh, 
then he went. Bongo's out there. Bongo's out there in the lounge suit, trying to save the planet. Some cunt whips his key pieces. I call it the worst case of identity theft gone record. You know, he's going to go home from there, isn't really. he? Imagine him going back doing a gig, you know, and the hedge not recognising him. <laughs> Oh God, give me short ass fucker here and sing with us. What do you think, Larry? <laughs> so that's not bongo, that's not. That's some cunt in a suit. Oh, you're not playing Wembley like that. Be off with you now before I call out the guards. <laughs> Must have been a fucking disaster. Must have been a right setback in his career, you know. There he is, trying to do every fucker a favour, and then that happens. Like I say, there's always one. And anyway, I've got my suspicions as to him, you know, but anyway, here it is, in, I was incensed. Fucking incensed, so. So I pinned this little pro. I'm not much of an issue-led person. As you can see, this happened three years ago, but I left it up somewhere. But it never stops hurting. <laughs> Who stole Bongo's trousers? <laughs> and he's... Oh yeah, it's cold. What's the title? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the old Callard and Bowsers went walk about him. He'd had them nicely worn in as well, didn't he? You know? Now he'll have to get a new pair. And you know what new leather jeans? They look like PVC. You know, I don't know fucking sheets, yeah. Sorry, anyway, here we go. Who stole Bongo's trousers and his 10 gallon Stetson hat? He can't save the fucking planet improperly dressed like that. Who stole Bongo's trousers? Can he get them back? He's trying to save the fucking world. That's no way to act. Who stole Bongo's trousers? Was it Posh or Bex? He can't mither the fucking Pope without his fucking checks. Because they, they were there, Posh and Bex, obviously. <laughs> obviously, they thought about it a lot and they feel very strongly about it. Who can blame that? We're all in the same boat. Anyway, back to the poem. Politics is hard enough.